Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about motion of a disk. I'm going to talk about the velocity analysis of a disk. We can also talk about acceleration of a disk as well. That would be a separate video. So velocity analysis. So disk is a simple geometry, but the motion is very interesting because we could have different motion. We could have rolling, we could have uh, sliding, flipping, and so forth. So let's call the center of gravity VG, G, and then the velocity associated with that would be VG, and then the point of contact would be C, and the angular velocity omega. So we can have multiple uh, motion. We can have rolling, which means that the velocity at C would be zero. We could have sliding, which is a pure translation, velocity at G and velocity at C would be the same, and also we could have slipping, which means that the velocity at G would be zero and the velocity at C would be R omega or negative R omega. So no velocity here and the velocity at the point of contact would be the opposite uh, direction. So sliding and flipping sometimes uh, are used interchangeably. So what we are, I'm referring here then there is sliding, that's a translational movement. The two velocities are the same. When I'm talking about a slipping, means velocity at C is moving to the left. Well, let's have a closer look at each scenario. Let's start with pure rolling. For a disc, pure rolling would be the perfect type of motion. In pure rolling, velocity at the point of contact is provided by rotation of a disk, r omega, and the velocity at the point of contact would be zero. So for our disk, velocity at g would be r omega, velocity at the point of contact would be zero, and if I want to draw the direction of friction force in a rolling, it would be uh, to the right. But the situation is not always perfect. Sometimes we have sliding as well, rolling and sliding. Which means that the velocity of center of gravity is not equal to r omega. It's not perfect rolling. For this case, velocity is bigger than r omega, which means that whatever velocity that we have is more than the velocity that the rotation can provide. So point C is sliding to the right. So velocity at G is the rotational component and also the sliding of point of contact. This is the same as if we write the relative velocity equation. Vg with respect to C, which is r omega plus Vc. This can happen when you are braking. When you are, when the car is braking, it's very possible that you are gonna have a combination of rolling and sliding. So the point of contact is uh, moving to the right. The, the direction of friction would be to the left. It's always the opposite direction of relative motion. The other case would be if we have rolling, with a slipping. So velocity at G in this case is less than R omega. So again, the velocity is not the same as the velocity of, uh, as the velocity that the, act, the rotation would provide, but it's less than that. So that we can conclude that the velocity of point of contact is again, is not zero. So some of the velocity is actually wasted here. So the velocity at C is to the left. So at this point, the tire, we can think of it that the disc is rubbing against the floor and is moving to the left. So if you want to find a velocity of G would be R omega also the additional velocity that is wasted because our disk is flipping. So we could have, this scenario could occur when you are accelerating. So 
your engine provides enough power for you through uh, R omega, but the velocity at this point cannot reach R omega simply because you don't have enough friction force. The friction force is the opposite direction. And the uh, four case scenario would be if you're gonna have sliding, which means that the disc is having a pure sliding motion. Velocity at G is the same as velocity at C. And you are not gonna have any rotation because it's complete translation. That could happen when you are braking and it's not, uh, you don't have any rolling. So if you don't have any ABS, anti-locking braking system, that's what's gonna happen on a snowy day. And that's not desired. So, and also we could have pure slipping as well for the fifth scenario, which means that for our disc, this center, the center of gravity is actually not moving. Velocity at G is zero. The disc is rotating about its center and then velocity at C would be R omega. You can think of it on a snowy day that you are driving and the tire is rotating, but the car is not moving that that would be pure slipping motion. So let's uh, look at some example here. Uh, we have a car driving 50 foot per second uh, to the left. So when the car is moving 50 feet per second, that means that the center of gravity is moving with that velocity. So we have the velocity at G. We also have R omega. If you look at the problem, we know velocity at G is 50. R omega, in the other hand, R is 1.5, omega is 30, is 45. So the center of the velocity, the center of gravity has a higher velocity than the rotation can provide. That means that the velocity at A should also help it. So we are gonna have here, we have rolling and a sliding because we have omega, we have some sort of rolling and then sliding. So in this case, we have velocity at A to the left. We have velocity at A and velocity at G. So velocity at G is the velocity at A plus the R omega component. This one is 50, velocity at A is, has to be five, and this one is 45. Uh, you can also use the relative velocity equation to find the velocity at A. You can say velocity at A is velocity at G center of gravity plus the relative component A to G, if the velocity at A is, is desired. This one you know is, 50 A to G would be 45, so that's five foot per second. And I assume that uh, the direction of the positive direction would be the direction that the car is traveling it, to, to the left. So we have the same car uh, with the same driver, but this time she's going at 80 feet per second. So if you look at the problem, if we draw our disc again, we have the velocity at G and we have R omega. The R and omega this time are different. So velocity at G is 80 foot per second. R omega, 1.4 times 100, that would be 140 foot per second. So if it was pure rolling, which is not in this case, because VG is not equal to R omega, the velocity at G had to be 140 foot per second. But some of the velocities are is being wasted at point A. So we have a slipping at point A. So VG with 80 equals to 140 plus VA, which we find it to be negative 60. So we have a slipping at point A, and the direction of the friction would be the opposite. So this is the case in case of acceleration because your engine could provide uh, enough rotation, could provide enough R omega, 
But whether that R omega is transferred into translational motion has to do with your the friction that you have. If the friction cannot provide that acceleration, then that velocity is not going to be rich, regardless of how fast you, you want the, the engine is uh, pushing the tires. So the limiting factor for achieving the desired acceleration is the friction of the tire with the ground. So if you're going to summarize what we talked about, you have uh, five different types of motion, rolling, rolling and sliding, rolling and slipping, sliding and flipping. The sliding and slipping terminology are used interchangeably. So I hope you will be able to distinguish what I use here. The direction of friction force is important, so it's always the opposite direction of the velocity at the point of uh, contact. 